Hi and welcome back to beginning Ionic Hybrid application development. In our last section, we got introduced to Ionic, some of its commands and features. This is the second section, Programming Ionic. In this section, we will take a look at Ionic app structure, routing, adding menu items to our app, creating controllers, and the Ionic list. This is video 2.1, Ionic app structure. In this video, we will discuss the app structure and MVC concepts. Let's see what an Ionic app looks like. From the host machine, open Finder or Explorer if you are on Windows and navigate to the Ionic Box master directory. Navigate into Ionic Projects, then the last app we built, Coffee. An Ionic app at the root has a few directories, a project file, and a JSON file. The first directory is Hooks. It holds code which is executed at key steps in the build process. Ionic uses the after hook. Ionic uses the after prepare hook to decorate the HTML markup with classes indicating which platform the code is running on. The next directory is plugins. Plugins are used by the underlying Cordova platform to talk to the native device. Out of the box, Ionic includes five plugins: console, device, splash screen, whitelist, and keyboard. The console plugin is a simple tool which makes the browser's console object available if it doesn't exist and forwards its output so it is visible to the developer, usually via an IDE. The device plugin makes device related information available to your application. The splash screen gives the developer a customized screen which is displayed while the application is loaded. If you don't add a custom image, it will be a generic one. Without the whitelist plugin, an Ionic app is restricted from accessing locations outside of the device. The keyboard plugin was created by the team at Ionic. It makes interacting with the keyboard easier for developers and more fluid for users. It also provides a solution to the dreaded issue which haunts a lot of Cordova apps, the keyboard pushing the text input off of the screen. The SCSS directory is for Ionic SAS. The individual files are not actually kept here, but there is a placeholder file which gathers all of the SAS files. The platform directory doesn't exist until you add one or more platforms to your project. Once you do, you'll see either an Android or iOS or both subdirectories here. These projects can be opened in Android Studio or Xcode. The final and most important folder is www. This is your application. The contents of the www directory should look familiar to anyone who has done any web development. Your application runs inside either a UI web view on iOS or a web view on Android which is created by Cordova. One of the most important things to understand is that your app files are stored on the device. They are not normally fetched from a remote server. Typically, there are five folders here. A CSS folder which holds an empty style.css file. This file is created for you to place your styles by Ionic. There is an IMG directory for any images your app may need, the JS directory for all of your JavaScript files, the lib directory holds the components of Ionic and Angular. I usually stick any other library my app needs here as well. So libraries like Lodash and jQuery, so libraries like Lodash and jQuery would go into this directory. And if you choose any template other than blank, there may be a template directory here as well. It holds all of your app's views. In the root of the www directory is the index.html file. This is the default place where your app kicks off. It is possible to change this to some other file if desired. In the next video, we'll talk about routing.